Greetings to one and all. Welcome to the session on coping mechanisms for stress management during the pandemic by Ms. Deepa Shah Chaki. She is a social entrepreneur, mental health counselor and wellness professional based in Calcutta. She is a part of various independent people's movement for social causes and she also organizes wellness workshops where she integrates healing therapies like art, music, lifestyle, dance movement and drama for physical and emotional wellness. A very warm welcome to everyone. Um, I'm really looking forward to a fantastic interactive session with everyone. And I want everyone to participate. Uh, it, I don't want it to be like a lecture where I'm just going to share you know, uh, do's and don'ts and uh, guidelines and not hear anything from the parents or the children. So let's keep it very interactive. Uh, to begin with, I uh, first would like to thank ProTouch Sports for giving me this opportunity to uh, you know, share this beautiful space with you all and uh, be in an interactive session with you all. So um, what uh, we can start with, uh, I would like to address the parents first. So uh, for the parents, I want to say that, uh, you know, we have to first look after ourselves because, you know, we, when we're on a plane, then the, you know, we're told that first we have to wear the oxygen mask ourselves and then help the person next to us. So in these unprecedented circumstances that we are in right now, it's very important that we first check ourselves, look after ourselves, and then look after everyone who we're in charge of. So our children, for our children, we are role models. They're watching us since the day they were born. They're observing every uh, thought, every word, every action of ours. So it's very important that we keep ourselves um, very uh, uh, in a good space, we stay calm, we stay centered, so that we can help our children as well on this journey, because these are very difficult times we're on in right now. Now for the children, I think you guys are already champions. You all are dealing with this whole uh, situation, this pandemic. I think we have to learn from you all because y'all are doing such a good job. Y'all are staying positive. Y'all are finding ways to engage yourselves in uh, you know, creative uh, activities. Y'all are giving us so much support in um, you know, keeping us mentally stable. So thank you for the kind of people y'all are, for the wonderful energy that y'all have that keeps us going as parents. I have a 12 year old son and uh, so he's a preteen and most of y'all here are in your teens. It's not an easy time in uh, one's life. Teenage is a very difficult time. I want the parents to also understand that, uh, you know, being a teenager is not easy. There are a lot of physiological uh, changes that happen. There are a lot of psychological changes that they go through. There is peer pressure, there is bullying, there's a need to fit in, you know, confirming to how others are behaving. Are others liking me or not? How am I accepted? I have to behave a certain way to fit into this group. So there are many, many uh, things they struggle with. So we have to be extremely compassionate and uh, kind when we deal with them. Especially all the children here are into sports. So uh, they understand how important um, physical strength and mental strength is to overcome obstacles, to excel, to do well in life. So. With this group, it's not very difficult for me to discuss mental health because y'all are already, y'all have learned how to keep your mental health uh, in place. You know, in your sports and the games y'all play, y'all understand how important mental health is along with your physical well-being. So uh, to begin with, I think I'll just share a few guidelines and uh, then y'all can ask me questions about uh, whatever I discussed or if y'all have any personal queries. So the first thing um, that we need to work on is our thought process in the given situation when there's so much uncertainty about what lies ahead. What the first thing we need to check is our thought process. There will be a lot of uh, confusion. There will be a lot of negative thoughts coming in. So for the thought process to be proper, we will have to stay positive. And to stay positive, we have to check our thought process. So whenever we're getting negative thoughts, we have to be very mindful 
of what is coming to us you know because what we think how we think is going to define how we feel and how we feel is going to define our actions so thought process first you know so if you're in these times whether your parents whether it's our children if there are thoughts coming to us throughout the day what how we can deal with this situation is we fix up a particular worry time during the day okay so we fix a time during the day preferably in the day time because towards the evening you want to be more relaxed and be ready to rest so preferably during the time you give yourself 10 minutes to half an hour to sit and worry that's all you do you don't do anything else you tell yourself that from 10 to 10:30 or from 12 to 12:30 all i'm going to do is worry whether it's by myself whether it's with my parents whether it's with my children that is the time i'm going to allow myself to sit and think about my worries beyond that time before or after if there are thoughts coming in worries coming in i'm going to tell myself my time to do this is that time 10 to 10:30 or whichever time you decide so after that if worries are coming in you consciously tell yourself no this is not the time this is my time to do what i'm doing right now i have to stay in the present moment i have to do what i'm doing right now and do that to the best of my ability so whether it's exercising whether you're doing something creative whether you're uh, you know eating whether you're watching something a movie or something just stay in the present moment consciously it's a practice it can't happen overnight consciously you have to tell yourself that i am going to leave this for that particular time that i have scheduled myself that as you do it with time you'll see that the rest of your day doesn't feel so heavy doesn't feel so uh, difficult you know and you will be effectively solving your problems because you've set a time aside for it now during your worry time or when your children are sharing their problems with you or you are discussing something you can either journal it like you can write down those uh, thoughts that are coming in the worries that are coming in you can ask your children to write them down and you can problem solve together so if your child is telling you that i am not being able to sleep well i am not getting any exercise i am not getting to go out this these are such terrible times you know sometimes they can be whiny because their life has taken a 360 degree turn right these children especially your children who are like into sports have uh, they they lead very active uh, lives and they're energetic kids so to lock them up in a house for months together you can imagine what is going on inside them right they have so much energy to uh, use and we you know we can be on our gadgets we can read we can watch a movie and we can feel okay we can talk to friends but these guys these kids are more used to running around they used to playing they used to uh, meeting their friends on a regular basis going to classes and they have been just put inside four walls you know so that time we have to give them to sit with their problems share uh, you know allow them to communicate with us openly about their issues their problems and find solutions so if your child is saying that i'm not being able to sleep well what would you uh, what is the kind of solution you would think as a parent you would think okay let maybe because he or she is not getting enough physical exercise they are not getting tired therefore they are not being able to sleep so we figured out a routine for them where we can arrange some active exercises for them so you know there are these apps which have home workouts so we can allow them to do that we can sit and watch youtube videos with them they can just skip a hundred times like sometimes when my my son is going crazy at night he's not being able to sleep he's not he gets irritated because he's not being able to sleep i just tell him jump up and down 100 times if nothing else and then you'll automatically want to sleep you know so it's as simple as that like you know in school they used to say like in our times now obviously it was not allowed uthak baithak karo uh, you know things like that murga bano so those things what what those things did was basically distracted you from being naughty and just made you center yourself made you rooted and so that you can come back to your normal state so these things are very important for us to do with our children you know find solutions with them and it cannot always be like we are giving them the knowledge you know sometimes we have to allow them to come up with creative solutions also 
they should be able to come up with some solutions. Then they feel very uh, nice when they have come up with an answer to their problems. So let them think. Don't immediately give them answers, you know, as parents. Then uh, you encourage them. Then what do you think you should do? If this is your problem, they're teens. They're not like very, uh, they're not like toddlers that we need to tell them everything. So we tell them, you tell me what you should do. Or if they are feeling a certain way, like if someone spoke to them uh, rudely or if they had a bad experience with their friends, you tell them that, what do you think you should do? You know, and listen to their answers, uh, cooperate with them basically. With teenagers, that's very important because they feel very good when they come up with answers to their problems themselves. So that is one, one is the worry time, scheduling that, two is establishing a routine for them from morning to night, give them a timetable. Children follow timetables very well, you know? So if you say that this time to this time is your breakfast time, this time to this time you study, this time to this time you play, you know? And then giving them a list of chores to do. Like usually because they're so busy, they never uh, really contribute in uh, the house work. So most of us now, we don't even have help at home. You know, you see the mothers are struggling all working mothers are now at home also and, you know, managing everything, work, home, even dads is the same thing for them. So involve your kids in those things also. Make them fill up the water bottles, you know, make them clean the fridge. Give them work like that. So schedule one house activity for them also. That will tire them a lot because they've never done it. If you, you know, make them fill 20 water bottles, they're going to be like, I'm going to sleep. So just get them involved in whichever way possible. They feel like they're a part of the family. They're helping the family. So those kind of values, which we normally did not get to inculcate, now we are getting to do that. We have the time to do that. So let's think of ways creatively to make a routine for our children from morning to night. You know, we're working from home, so we do neglect our kids also at times because we are so into our work and uh, they are they are like lost they don't know what to do usually they know they have this class to go to they have uh, this thing to uh, attend or meet a relative or do anything but right now they're looking at us for solutions so we have to give them that time to sit and discuss the second thing i want to talk to you all about is positive self-talk i don't know how many of you all know about that but talking to yourself in a positive manner this is another thing we must consciously work on about and check, you know, check yourself the whole day, how you're talking to yourself. We are very mindful about how politely we speak to others or whether I was rude, whether I was uh, impolite, whether I hurt someone, but we usually don't think about how we're talking to ourselves, do we? Am I being kind to myself? Am I being nice to myself? We don't think of these things. You know, children, especially with teenagers, you'll see, oh, he does this so well. I am the loser. I can't do anything. You know, do we find ourselves thinking like that sometimes? He is so good. She is so good. I am not good at this. I'm not good at that. Then they'll come whining to us uh, and say that, uh, you know, you know, because now we parents are very aware. So we've stopped the whole comparison thing which our parents and grandparents used to do that see, learn from him, learn from her. That thing as parents, we're not doing now, but our children come and tell us that I'm not good at this. I'm not good at that. So what do we do? What do we start ourselves? First of all, we have to see and observe how we are talking to ourselves or how we talk about ourselves in front of our children. You know, that is very important. If your child hears you saying a negative thing about yourself, allowed your ch your child thinks it's okay if my mother or father can say that they're uh, you know stupid they're foolish oh i've been such a fool you know things like that they learn from you and they start doing that doing that because they're constantly watching us and our actions so talking to yourself with love with kindness with the same in the same way that you will treat another person is very important, especially in these times, because we are not, uh, we are going through a very difficult time. This uncertainty can drive us crazy. So to maintain our sanity, first thing is talk to yourself kindly, be nice to yourself, right? Okay. 
and what else let me just see uh, so we've covered worry time we've covered self talk staying in the present moment we've discussed that we have to be in the here and now it's very important whatever activities we're doing we have to do it to the best of our ability with full concentration and focus because that helps us stay calm stay rooted and stay positive so that is very important next thing was challenging your negative thoughts you have to write them down you have to think about it only during the worry time you have to come back to it the next day not do it the whole day so okay when you when we say challenging your negative thoughts what we mean is you ask yourself this negative thought that i'm getting is it a fact or is it an opinion is it my opinion that is making this thought negative is it someone else's opinion that is making this thought negative or is it a fact so you check how realistic your worry is or how realistic that thought is or how much it really impacts your life because if it doesn't impact your life don't give it that importance forget about it and then come to the real problems or the real issues and find creative solutions for it so when you're writing down your thoughts you're also understanding which thought is really bothering you too much and which one is not bothering you so you eliminate and you deal with your problems effectively basically about self care like we discussed we have to give our children a routine we have to keep in mind a daily exercise this is not just for the children it is for us also we should have one hour of a daily exercise routine we have to have relaxation techniques some kind of uh, time that we give to ourselves whether it is through a guided medication med meditation whether it is through a relaxation technique as uh, sports children i'm sure they are taught different kind of techniques to relax right to calm themselves down so just inculcate those things again into their life like whatever they learn in sports how to deal with difficult situations how to calm themselves down when they are anxious so get those things back into their life right now even at home so relaxation techniques guided medita uh, meditation daily exercise uh music dancing writing whatever they feel like doing right art art is a great uh, therapeutic exercise right now you don't have to be you know with art you don't have to be a there is no perfect artist art any anyone can be an artist so it's a release of emotions it is a release of uh, stress anxiety so art can be used very well to deal with uh, stress and anxiety then we have uh, scheduling in activities uh, you know with for children teenagers especially in the daily routine if you can schedule in some activities that make them feel like they achieved something or they accomplished something that gave them pleasure that gave them satisfaction that made them feel like oh i did this in the whole week if you can give them some activities like that that will make them feel very good it will make them feel very positive so it could be in the kitchen if they've never you know rolled a roti you can tell them to try to do that that will be a challenge for them or you know water some plants look after some plants for a week and see them watch them grow that will give them a sense of accomplishment it doesn't have to be any major things it can be small day to day things and they'll feel really good about it so you know like things that make them feel like usually when they're playing their golf or sports in school when they uh, play it well it's a sense of accomplishment that makes them stay positive that makes them feel good so we have to just replicate that in the times now inside the house give them small small challenges to achieve and to do well at, well and then they feel good they'll talk about it with everyone they'll tell their grandmother i did this i've never done this before see how i well how well i did it you know so this helps them stay rooted and grounded also uh we have to look after their social connections so all the people that they usually met and are not meeting now not being able to talk to not being able to see it's very important that we schedule in through internet now through internet it's very easy to have video calls with our friends and relatives so we schedule in calls for them we schedule in family zoom sessions 
and that makes them feel very good and very connected so during the week even if it's not possible every day keep the weekends for you know group chats or video chats with friends with family with their friends you know because they cannot meet them now at least once they know how they're doing or they talk about what they're doing share with each other uh, it just makes them stay connected makes them feel positive now we come down to sleep patterns sleep patterns for children have gone completely haywire a because they're not getting enough physical exercise or and b because you know they're not tired mainly so for that like we discussed we have a uh, we ensure that they get enough exercise which they would get normally so that they feel tired and so that they can sleep so that entire routine and timetable will help them look after help them look after their sleep pattern as well another thing at bedtime as parents we have to do with our children is we discuss with them the highlights of their day right just like you have a worry time discussion with your child we discuss with them at bedtime about the highlights of their day what are the good things we do not discuss negative things it's always positive so we discuss what are the good things they saw they heard they felt they experienced what was the highlight of their day we have a discussion like that and we end this with a prayer you must have seen a lot of children they have a habit to pray before they go to bed and why do we do that we pray before we go to bed because do we ever say bad things when we pray or when we talk to god do we ever say anything negative it's usually that i want this i want that or please make this happen or please make this problem disappear so we talk in a very positive way with god or with whoever we believe in any power so you having a positive conversation so you pray you thank you express gratitude this we must do with our children we must express gratitude that you have a comfortable bed to sleep in you have a roof on your head you have food to eat you know that in itself is a blessing right now we are at a time right now in life or in this uh, pandemic situation where everything we have we have to count we have to count our blessings we have to be thankful every single day that we are safe we are healthy we are here in this zoom session all of us are healthy all of us are safe that in itself is a big blessing for all of us so we count our blessings we pray we thank we express gratitude to everyone who's looking after us and the other thing we do with our parents is we visualize okay so just before we go to sleep we close our eyes we visualize a world which is beautiful we visualize a world which is virus free we visualize happy smiling faces of all our loved ones we visualize lush green forests you know the moment we do an exercise like this how do we feel we feel great right we feel calm we feel comfortable so this bedtime routine can help uh, children and parents not only to bond it can help us to be very comfortable and wake up on a positive note if you sleep on a positive note you wake up on a positive note try this and see you'll see that it really works right the other thing i wanted to talk to you all about is restricting gadget timings once i open this conversation i want to know how many kids are into gadgets and video games or you all can just put in this information in the chat also i want to know how many children are into video games because that is one thing we parents struggle as right now because you all have nothing else but that to keep you all busy till we make this solid timetable for you all so i want to know how much time are we giving to gadgets because these video games have been designed in a way to completely lure the children into it it has been designed to tempt the children to be addicted to it so gadget timings we have to consciously restrict we have to allow them to play games but then we also have to restrict the time if they are not listening to you you just take the gadget and you put it in the locker and then you take it out and give it to them your children will realize that they are feeling so much better if they're not playing on the gadget the whole day 
and they themselves will find other ways to keep themselves busy so gadget timings is an absolute must fixed timings for gadgets and the last but not the least therapy i want everyone to understand the therapy is something which is it's not uh, it doesn't make you a weak person if you're seeking therapy we all need therapy from time to time we all need counseling even the counselors the counselors need the most counseling because you know uh, you're giving so much time to other people's problems you don't really find time to solve your own problems so counseling and therapy we all need as human beings and as human beings we have to know that we you know the concept of survival of the fittest so as the human race we will survive this we have to empower ourselves with that thought that come what may whatever struggles come whatever we go through we adapt very well so we will survive it but how well we survive it is the question how we find different ways to survive so that is up to us and for that our mental peace our mental health is very important so if it means i need to go talk to somebody and share a little bit and that makes me feel like i can deal with my problems better just do it you know allow yourself that comfort allow yourself that release and relaxation that i need to meet somebody and just share and the thing about counseling is it gives you you're talking to a person who's not going to judge you who will not who will be fully accepting of you with all your problems and your issues so be allow yourself to be free to get that and your child to get that also you know sometimes as parents we think if i can't solve my problem nobody else can my child's problem then nobody else can you know we think we understand our children the best no one else can solve my child's problem but that is not the case sometimes there may be situations where your child feels uh, you may not be able to understand or the child feels better if they talk to someone else so allow that child that freedom to choose who that friend, uh, you know who your child wants to talk to and then have interactive sessions with the child's counselor and you also even as parents you must give yourself that uh, comfort at this point of time we all need that comfort someone to help us to guide us to just join us in our journey of uh, feeling better it's as simple as that so i want you all to understand that therapy is very very important and crucial at this point of time so this is more or less like a round up of the kind of uh, you know steps we can take to feel better and now we can open this to questions and uh, to interaction to our parents i can see uh, someone has written screen time has increased enormously yes due to everything going online just not games youtube videos watching constantly has become a big problem exactly yes so for this like we discussed it's very important that we have a routine set for them that they have to follow and we can of course reward our children if they follow their routine for 7 days we give them a reward and a reward does not necessarily mean buying them something it can be cooking them their favorite meal it can be watching a movie that they want you know you to watch with them or anything it can be something very small to something very big but a small gift because they followed a routine they deserve a gift you know so in any way if we can make them feel nice we should do that for them so once following once they follow that routine it will help a lot um how to restrict screen time in teenagers given that everything of theirs is totally online i understand so yeah the screen time and the gadget time is uh, what we discussed already um the moment uh, see with the online classes also the schools have planned it in a way that they do get a, a break in between so in that break we have to make sure that they are not on the gadget you know like if they get 20 minutes between each class or uh, if there's a gap of 3 4 hours between the classes then we have to ensure that they are not on the gadgets uh, the whole time that they have something to do in between their uh, other classes online classes and their school classes we have to fill that gap in with other activities which are not gadget oriented or which are not screen oriented and there's a different question yeah so you want to read it out here yes ma'am i can read it out for you public health actions uh, like social distancing during this pandemic 
can make the children feel isolated and lonely, which can increase stress and anxiety. So how can one cope up with that situation? Yes. So for this, we have to give them that time, that social connection time, which uh, I discussed before that we allow them to meet their family, their relatives, their friends. We organize Zoom sessions for them where they can see everyone and talk to them and write to each other. You know, we can even start a, uh, something like a pen pal thing that we used to have before, like engage them in writing letters. Again, we can post those letters for them. So just, we just have to get together with our kids and find different ways and means to connect. So even they might find it, find it interesting to receive a letter from someone, you know, like if their grandparents or if their uncles and aunts can write a letter and send it to them. For our children, it's a big thing to receive a letter, you know, by mail, something they can read that, that is handwritten because everything is on the screen otherwise. So we can try to do that. We have to find ways and means for them to uh, interact with people because that is what they miss. So like you would organize play dates for your kids before, like send them to their friends' houses to meet and stuff. Now we have to organize Zoom dates. So where all of them can get together and have a session where they talk to each other. And of course, we can't be around all the time on their heads when they're talking to their friends. We have to allow them that privacy also. And then of course, come back to them. So this is something as parents, we will have to do. We'll have to keep them connected socially. We call them happy hours. When they meet people, they want to talk to and interact with, whether it's weekends, whether it's um, midweek, we organize these calls for them and they can, uh, you know, they feel more connected that way. I want the children to talk also. Children, do you all have any questions? I want the children to interact a bit. I love working with kids. It's my uh, most favorite because, uh, you know, when even all of us adults, I want you kids to know are actually children. You know, we have to pretend like we're grown up because we've, we've actually grown up. But actually, we're all children at heart, at heart. We want to be like you all all the time, but we have responsibilities. So you all to, I want you all to say something also. Tell me, apart from golf, what else do you all like to do? You all can put it inside the chat or you all can talk about it, whatever. Okay. Ma'am, by the time they write something, we have another question. Do you want to take it? Sure. Uh, as cream time has increased, you mentioned, parents mm -hmm. are also getting more stressed about this. And so how to deal with this? These are also creating tension between the parent and the child sometimes uh, because everything has gone online. So, you know, it's compulsory and it has to be done still. How can we, you know, deal with this? So the simple solution, the simplest a solution is the timetable that we'll make for them for the whole day, from the time they wake up to the time they go to bed. We have to assess how much screen time is a part of that. So the classes usually get over by, I think in the morning, by morning or afternoon, their classes get over. So from that time to their, uh, you know, other classes or tuitions or art or whatever else they do, we have to see how much time is there and what they can do and what they can be engaged in in that particular time. And what else can they do after those online classes are over uh, about how we can creatively engage them and how we can be a part of their lives in that time. How much time can we give them? So, you know, the moment you communicate more with your children and the more time you are allowing yourself with your child, that stress is going to reduce. I, I feel so much uh, less stressed when I have a conversation with my child. Sometimes, you know, like I'm busy, he's busy. It feels like we're busier now with the online classes and everything. Before we used to get more time to interact and talk and stuff. So now because it's all screen time, there is more stress. We have to give ourselves at least an hour uh, in the day, an hour in the night to just sit and hang out with our kids. You know, the stress levels will definitely come down when you spend time with your children. So if we consciously spend that time with our children, I think that that stress level can be taken care of also along with the timetable. All right. Now. So the children, uh, what, what do you all love to do besides golf? 
Ma'am, I like to uh, garden. I, I during lockdown I started gardening and I love to gar like have so many plants around me and I enjoy how my hard work shows the result of a beautiful plant in the end. Who is this? Can I get the name, Sia? I can't. I don't know who's talking to me. Uh, this was Prisha Poddar, ma'am. She's from our academy. So Prisha, uh, Prisha, gardening is helping you feel better, right? Can you uh, can you unmute Prisha so I can have a conversation with her? Uh, she's yes, saying yes, ma'am. Yeah. So uh, gardening, you know, staying close to nature definitely makes us feel better because we are all products of nature. So the closer we are to nature, we will feel better. That is something children can definitely take up and uh, parents and children can together, uh, you know, be, uh, get into gardening. Even if you don't have a big space, big open space, you can still look after four or five plants, you know. So uh, that's a wonderful uh, thing to do, Prisha. I'm so happy that you're enjoying gardening. I love gardening myself. Hey. Uh, I also and, like baking and um, I also like baking and drawing and sketching. Wonderful. So are these things you uh, decided to do yourself or your parents uh, helped you? No, ma'am. I actually started doing it on my own and I actually got into golf uh, on my own as well. Wow. Okay. That's commendable. That's wonderful. And other than golf, uh, you're saying you like gardening, drawing, sketching, and cooking. And, uh, yeah. And so do you miss your friends? Do you miss meeting your friends? Actually, uh, during quarantine, we actually made a small WhatsApp group where uh, every week we play games. Okay. One day of every week, we play games. Uh, we all get together on Zoom and we enjoy and talk to each other. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. That's really great. So yeah, like I said, we should have that. But social... we are not following it right now because uh, actually I am having exams. Okay. Okay. Wow. But you'll get back to it, right? The moment the exams are over. So yeah, so Prisha is yes, ma'am. Laksha, why yes, don't you tell me what's up, what's happening with you? How are you dealing with the pandemic? Nothing, auntie. Just getting bored at home. You're not, not your mama? You're not helping your mother with her uh, cooking, uh, her uh, all her beautiful dishes that she cooks. No, she does it all on her own. She like she's always uh, like sometimes I just go and just watch her cooking. Mm. Sometimes I like to uh, sketch. Sketch. Okay. And what else? You don't play with your brother? No, he's also like, after exam also, he's studying a bit and he's like, he's sleeping. So I get bored at home. So what, what kind of problems are you facing? Why don't we listen to the children? You can tell us what are the different, uh, how your life has changed in the pandemic. Like, right? Before lockdown, we can like we could play games with our friends and we could uh, meet meet each other. We could we could enjoy the uh, restaurants or food food restaurants, uh, and we can also like we can uh, get do uh, get together with friends. But now uh, because of the lockdown, we cannot meet each other and we have to like we are just locked up in our houses. So it's a bit difficult. Oh, yes. At at evenings, I I just spend my time by watching the IPL. Watching? Watching the IPL, the cricket games. The IPL, okay. So the IPL is a relief for all you sports kids, right? Some something to look forward to. So see, in life, we'll always have something to look forward to. You know, if you're if you kept yourself in a good space, in a good mind space, and good uh, body space where you're fit. Uh, mentally, physically, in every way, if you kept yourself uh, in a good space, then you will find ways to look forward to things in life, you know? So like this IPL, there will be something or the other to engage you and keep you occupied. Right? And if you were feeling low, if you were not feeling fit or active, even the IPL wouldn't have been exciting for you. 
so to keep yourself upbeat we have to stay mentally and physically fit so how are you dealing with the exercise what are you doing for uh, your physical uh, exercise? exercise actually uh, during during the uh, during october i have i'm suffering from dengue and weakness so it's a bit difficult to uh, exercise okay. but uh, but actually on fridays we do exercise on twitter so uh, on that only we, i do exercise okay so you have an exercise routine in your yes, yes that is very important that's great so uh, what do you tell yourself when you're feeling uh, bored or when you're feeling um, you know irritated with the whole situation what do you talk do you I just calm yourself down in i just i just think and tell to myself that when will this pandem- pandemic get be uh, when will the city be uh, like open But up again and then the theaters and all the places will open up so those and are questions you ask yourself and what are the answers uh, the only answer is no till the end of the year until okay. the vaccine is not coming hmm. so, okay So that is the answer. Does that make you feel better when you have an answer to your question? A little bit, but I get excited that when will the year end and when will this pandemic end and when right. will the vaccine come? So what does that tell us? That tells us that no problem is going to stay with us forever, right? It will go sometime. It gets over sometimes. So when we have that kind of a thought process, it makes us feel good. it makes us feel positive right now suppose you are a person who always has negative thoughts who always likes to worry what would you tell yourself it would be irritating and difficult to live like asking uh, asking ourselves negative thoughts makes us feel more irritated right and, uh, and it, answers yeah. are also not that positive right so it makes you feel down it doesn't make you feel good right so the moment you're having this kind of a conversation with yourself where it is positively uh, oriented what are you doing you're empowering yourself right and the moment i tell myself that this is not going anywhere this is going to be around there is no way out of this the now when i'm saying these three sentences i'm feeling down right everyone here is not going to feel good about it but the moment i say that i am here i'm a part of the human race we are survival of the fittest we will survive this the moment i say that nothing you know stays forever there is light at the end of the tunnel we are going to overcome this we feel what we feel power we are power given and, and what power we feel powerful and uh, more better than before exactly so this is what we have to do this is when i meant positive self talk this is what i meant that how we talk to ourselves how we talk to others also not just to ourselves how we talk to others people around us how our parents talk to us how we talk to our parents it should be uh, oriented in a way our conversations with ourselves and everyone around us should be oriented positively we need that now more than ever right so that's great that you you know you deal with your problems and your questions and you find answers so you know uh, children don't really understand meditation very well but in meditation this is what we do we allow thoughts to come in it's not like you become you go into meditation and you become like the buddha you become like the blank state of mind and you achieve nirvana meditation is basically you are just centering yourself in one place you are trying to connect your head to your heart because when the connection there weakens is when we f- find it difficult to find solutions to our problems we find difficult we find it difficult to uh, stay rooted or stay connected so the head and the heart is what that there should be no traffic jam there so through meditation what we're doing is we are eliminating the things that are disturbing that connection between our head and our heart we need our head to find solutions we need our heart to find solutions so through meditation what we're doing is we're just sitting in a place where we're telling ourselves that i'm going to sit in this place and i'm going to let all the thoughts come in 
let them come in and let them go out so you sit and you just let it happen experience it i've heard a lot of people saying that i to can't meditate you know it's not my thing i cannot sit in one place for that long so there is no specified timing for meditation you sit for as long as you're feeling good if you're feeling uncomfortable you get up but try to do that try to sit in a place for 5 minutes 10 minutes like uh, lakshya just shared that you know he gets these thoughts where he feels uh, when is this going to end and then he's found an answer to it also you may not find an answer every time also but you allow yourself that time to let thoughts come in to process them to leave and then the thoughts to leave you that is what we do in meditation basically and that is a relaxation technique as well it's not just meditation it's a relaxation technique also it soothes us it calms our nerves it makes us feel it makes us get more clarity basically so that was great that lakshya's feedback and prisha's feedback was great any other child that would like to tell us how they are coping with this because the children uh, we will learn the best from if they share their problems with us aditya can you come up hi ma'am my name is aditya hi aditya so ma'am i usually spend my time doing lot of work ma'am for example our school gives us lot of assignment to complete every week so i'm busy with that only so there's nothing more interesting i do but are you enjoying that yeah there's no problem you enjoying the assignments yeah so they're all like uh, study oriented or is there fun stuff there also most of it is studies only and the rest of it is fun okay so your school has given you some fun assignments also yeah that's great so that is that is very nice but do you miss your uh, golf uh yeah but i'm going to practice oh you're going to practice yeah. so how are you managing that twice a week i go and um, uh, tuesday and friday i go and sunday sometimes i go on the course okay and uh, are a lot of people doing that lot of children doing that yeah most of the students are doing okay so how were you feeling before that did you feel a difference when you joined back or uh, like how did it feel when you were not allowed to play golf uh nothing no i was feeling okay only you are feeling okay because you kept yourself engaged with your assignments and stuff like that yeah, all the yeah what else did you do uh netflix netflix okay so that in time that is a problem with us parents apart from that nothing else ma'am okay but how did you stay fit how did you keep yourself fit like i have classes i have my personal trainer oh you have a personal trainer fabulous great so that kept you upbeat right and motivated yeah. Yeah. but if you didn't have that that would make a difference to you right no 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 i didn't get any negative thoughts and all yeah because you was doing your regular uh, exercise yeah. and stuff like yeah. that you kept your i was i didn't think a lot hmm and you About. kept your routine uh, followed a routine also yeah yeah so that helps a lot like having a routine really helps and yes, uh, uh what else have you heard your friends complain about anything any uh, problems uh no uh, mostly the assignments they are really frustrated mm-hmm. they say that even on sunday we have to do a lot of assignments so so like, i have no why they don't enjoy, enjoy the assignments no okay no. okay so uh what else are they doing to keep themselves busy they are all, they are also having a lot of classes mm-hmm. all that private they go to the, all that private coaching classes so okay so you are in what cl- uh, class 10 or 11 or something or 10 Ten, so there's a lot of studies in like class ten is of course a lot of studies, right? So you are still sorted because in class ten usually anyways we are in lockdown because of board exams, so you are in a place where your life is would have anyways been like this, right? Yes. So so it's easier for you, but I think it's the you know younger teens who are struggling more, like the say twelve, twelve uh, or thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. They are having a bad time with this whole thing. so but you must be me- uh, missing meeting your friends right like the social connection yeah that that is a problem so you all you all have your uh-huh. uh, chats and group chats and things like that eh hey, on sunday on sunday you fixed up a time so you are a very sorted kid basically you have everything set yeah so you are like a role model for the other children here right so that, 
to worry about so we'll have some uh, motivational coaching sessions from you now also next see ya you make a note aditya is someone uh, kids should be listening to yeah, definitely ma'am yeah so any other children parents any queries uh ma'am there are uh, not much children now hmm. i think parents are here yeah so i i see more questions from parents uh yes ma'am there's one question you can uh, i'll just read it out uh what kind of mental challenges can be faced while doing regular schools and studies online and you know so many things going on hmm this is a question okay so the concern is that uh, how will they be uh, how will they get used to doing online classes right yes Or the mentally uh, mental challenges that they face yeah so this is again uh, i think from child to child some children have taken very well to online classes and some children are finding it very difficult because they like to uh, you know uh, interact more in the class or they like to uh, you know the whole experience of being with your friends and having a class and things like that so this for this it's just again adaptation i think just like we are adapting to different circumstances the children will also adapt and children are quicker to adapt to situations than we are so it's just a matter of time like they call it the so called new normal uh, children will not face so much difficulty because they know that this is what it is it is what it is they are far more accepting than um, us adults because we are you know very set in our ways and in our likes and dislikes and what we are comfortable with and what we are not comfortable with but children are more uh, open to adapting to new situa situations so if there is a child having a particular problem then that can be uh, discussed separately um but otherwise i think it shouldn't be too much of a problem there won't be any mental challenges as, as such um when can i understand if i have anxiety during this pandemic time okay uh now the thing is anxiety understanding uh, and for, for understanding anxiety uh, this is a parent asking right is this a question from a parent no ma'am this is a question from uh, from a junior okay so uh, basically you will feel uh uneasy anxiety is of a, uh, of many different kinds sometimes you can feel anxiety if uh it's raining continuously for four days you know so there are various degrees of anxiety so sometimes you might just feel anxious if you see uh something that you don't like sometimes anxiety can be uh happening to you and you don't realize it so the effects of anxiety are basically you will not feel comfortable you will feel uneasy you will feel um, irritable so again various degrees of anxiety it's if it's something that you feel is not making you're feeling uh, uneasy in your body or uh, you're feeling stressed unnecessarily it could be anxiety so it's very difficult to explain exactly but uh, you will know you your body will tell you your mind will tell you that there is something bothering you that that could be a uh, some a little bit of anxiety or again how much it's affecting you it can only be uh, after discussing it with your parents or a therapist we can understand all right ma'am there's a question from lakshya yeah. uh, is there any mental exercise to decrease the negative thoughts and tensions that we feel we have about physical exercises and studies so many things going on yes there are many uh, mental exercises um there are many relaxation techniques also that are there to make you feel better so uh there are muscle relaxation techniques uh there's yoga there is uh you know just even sitting and solving crossword puzzles or doing some sudoku or things like that can also make you feel better again like i said if we schedule in activities which make us feel like we've accomplished something or we've achieved something we can feel better you know so we have to incorporate those kind of things uh, in our daily routine to uh, keep ourselves engaged and feel better feel more comfortable and meditations also meditations help a lot 
so it's not easy it may not happen overnight but uh, every day if you allow yourself to sit and uh, meditate you will feel better at some point uh but it would be nice to hear from some parents you know uh about their experience right now uh in the pandemic like how different it is for them and how they have come out uh, found creative solutions it will be really nice for um, other parents to hear if some parents can share what are the struggles they faced i think they can chat i can they, i think they can type also no see ya if they if they feel more comfortable with that Yes, ma'am. They can definitely do. Yeah. Uh, so, requesting parents, if you have any uh, anything to speak on, you can drop drop it in your in the uh, chat box. Right? How you all faced a certain uh, obstacle that you all faced with your child, or how you all managed uh, their gadget timings and anything like any one thing that you all uh, overcame together as a parent child combination, because I think that will help. Uh, many people you know like uh, if they can see it worked for someone then it will work for them also i think so far gadget uh, timings is like the screen time is the biggest struggle we are all facing but also it's the new normal so we really have to adapt to it and make peace with it essentially the children are very bright the kind of uh, things they've said is very nice to hear like i said in the beginning that the children are very sorted um you know they find creative ways to deal with solutions they stay upbeat they stay motivated so uh, i think it's us parents who find it more difficult to deal with situations sometimes because we forget being kids we we are so uh, you know into our um, daily worries and responsibilities that we forget to have fun ourselves we forget to be children ourselves so as parents we have to allow ourselves that we have to allow ourselves to enjoy ourselves to take out time to uh, write to take out time to draw to take out time to it's like you know once you become a parent you think that is my primary responsibility everything else about me secondary i come uh you know second place first place is the child but what we forget is that if we are not going to be uh you know all right if we are not going to look after ourselves then how can we look after our children so it's very important to give yourselves that priority and give yourself the first place you know because your children are watching you all the time yeah someone has a question um hi my question is as a grandparent i just wanted to know that uh, because i'm concerned about my grandchildren i would like to know that what are the signs that parents should look for in their children to see that they are anxious or not getting it right because you know that uh, we know from experience that children can hide a lot of things and parents are not usually aware most of the time you will know that uh, you know from somewhere else what your children are doing so my question is that what signs should we look for in a child to know whether the child is under any kind of mental strain or whether the child is going through something because we can be vocal but most of the time the children are not they they will probably throw a tantrum but what are the signs to look out for okay that's a very good question uh basically with children it is very difficult it also depends on your parent child equation so if you are a parent who has very clear and open lines of communication with your child you usually don't face that problem the child will come and tell you uh when they are going through some kind of uh, anxiety or if something is bothering them troubling them a lot if you are a parent who talks to your child about anything and everything who keeps open lines of communication all the time with teenagers we usually feel that they do go into a shell sometimes they are not very open but uh, if you're an observant parent you will know that there is a change of behavior in them that they're not behaving like their normal selves they want to be by themselves more or they will 
uh, not encourage conversations they will um, you know ignore certain things they will not want to be bothered so with teens those kind of things happen because they they are under a lot of uh, peer pressure when they are teenagers there's a lot of pressure to fit in to conform uh, so they have to behave a certain way so they tend to lose a bit of their individuality is why when they teenagers we have to be very uh, observant we have to keep an eye out even if they're busy working we have to keep an eye out on our children at all times about what they're watching who they're talking to what are they reading what matter what uh, stuff are they exposed to because they are going through a huge change from being little children to moving towards adulthood so like i said in the beginning teenage is a tough time for children this is why parents have to be all the more um, connected to them basically so we have to keep our lines of communication open we have to observe them and uh, if we notice there is a change of behavior and they're not being able to talk to us then let us be open to seeking counseling for them or giving them some kind of uh, therapy but again thank you so much yeah but again all children behave differently so there is no uh, set rule for it that children can pretend very well also they might be having the struggling with the toughest of things but not open up about it or pretend like everything is good so as parents we have to just uh, keep a watch and keep talking to them every day on a regular basis keep that bond strong right yeah any other questions from anyone i see a lot of familiar faces here um, i don't think anyone has any any further questions okay um so we can wrap up for today uh, yes ma'am uh that's fine yeah because and, uh, they can uh, to be honest uh, this was a brilliant session because uh, you already I, as i said i think you answered most of the questions beforehand so the parents didn't have anything to ask it was my pleasure absolutely my pleasure and i still uh, since this is also going to be on youtube please feel free to uh, post further queries or questions uh, on this link and i will get back to them on it for sure and they can uh, feel free to write to me also separately if they want So I wish you all the best, everyone here present here. Thank you so much for uh, sharing your beautiful energy, and uh, I hope the few little guidelines that we shared here will help you, and uh, you all can benefit from it. And please feel free to get in touch uh, anytime for any kind of assistance, guidelines, help. Uh, the idea is that we have to celebrate life at every stage. whatever struggles we may be facing whatever difficulties that are coming our way we have to be grateful for this life and we have to make sure that every day every moment counts and we make every precious moment of this life uh, worth our while you know so let's be kind let's be compassionate let's keep uh, let's look after people around us and let's look after ourselves because uh, and understand that we are going through a difficult time and we will need to do this for ourselves so thank you so much everyone thank you sia so much for your uh, you know constant um, uh, cooperation i really appreciate it no problem at all ma'am uh, thank you for doing this session uh, the session was wonderful and it will be reuploaded in the youtube channel uh, called champ for life academy so everyone can get the rerun uh, in in a couple of days mm -hmm. uh, thank you everyone for attending the session presented by cfl please subscribe to the channel and also so that uh, you support us and that's all ma'am thank you so much for doing thank the session you. thank you everyone have a good evening